Hi crocheters, Crafty Crystal here and I've got another uh, tile for you. This is a variation, a very simple variation of the big uh, squared diamond granny. Uh, no slip stitching, no sneaking around the edges. Uh, it looks reasonably double sided. And it's a lot easier to make. I'm this is a uh, nine inch square, made it with a J hook, and it's nice and loose. I wanted something light and loose that could be used for um, a shawl or a scarf or a pretty bedspread. I think these big tiles would be pretty on a bedspread. This is nine inches across. And today I'm making one, show you how to make it with the, um, with a G hook. And for some reason, the G hook ended up coming out a little less, just a little less than eight inches. That's not a super big difference in sizes, considering here's what I used on the outside one. And here's what I used on the inside one. You'd think there'd be a lot bigger difference, but I think it's because I used the same size yarn. Anyway, this is a good size to uh, connect together to make a scarf with. You could also use this as tiles for a bedspread. If you're going to put material backing on it, it'll make a nice pillow cover even. Okay, let's get started. Here we go. Okay, bring my feed thread from the back of my hand, around two fingers, around two fingers again, hold on to it with my thumb and pinky, bring my feed thread around and hold it too. That just holds the tension and makes it easier to handle. With my hook side facing my hand, I'm going to come up under these two threads here and grab my feed thread. When I pull it back like this, I'm twisting it when I go up to grab some more. And now I have my slip knot and my first chain. Make sure that your tail is always headed in the same direction that your hook is. Okay, one, two, three more. That gives us one, two, three, four. That's our double and our um, stitch between. We're going to wrap and we're going to come back down into here to our magic circle and do another double. Chain one, chain two, wrap, come down into our magic circle, pick up a stitch, bring it through two, and through two, chain one, wrap, come back down through our magic circle, through two, 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 chain two. Now that's two sets. This is our third set, a double, a chain one, and a double, chain two. Here's our third set, double, Chain one, double, chain two, our right, third or our fourth, one, two, three, one, two, three, that's our fourth set, 
Okay. So you pull your tail and you look at these two loops. See which one's moving? Okay. You take that loop that was moving and you come up here on the same end as the tail is and you pull it. And that tightens the second loop. Pull your tail. Snip that puppy off. You don't need it anymore. Okay. Now to find where to hook back on with, you have this loop here, which is at the top of this double. The loop next to it is over your hole, so that's your chain one. So this loop right behind it is the one we want to slip stitch into. Okay, there. Now we want to do these back and forth, not around in the same direction. So we're going to turn it, and we're going to slip stitch back down into that corner. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, and we're going to do a double in that same corner. And we're going to chain two. Then we're going to do a double and a chain one. And a double and a chain one. Now we're going to go to our next corner. And we're going to repeat what we just did on this corner. Double, chain one, double, I call that a set. One, two, and we're going to do another set. Double, chain one, double. Now we chain one and we go to the next corner. And we do another set, one, two, and on to the next corner. And you chain one before you latch on. So we got the one on top of our, our column. We got the one over the hole. And this one is the one we slip stitch into. Okay, we got two layers and we turn. And we slip stitch back into our hole. Chain one, two, three, four. We go back into that hole with another double. Chain one. And this is the third tier, okay? The third layer, third row. On this one, we want to do three doubles, uh, three chains. One, two, three. We did two here, we did two here, we do three here, three of them. Our the rest of our sets are the same. Double, single crochet, double. Single crochet. Double, sing, chain one. Double, chain one, two. 
two, three. Double, chain one, double, chain one. Have you ever tried to watch a crochet video done in a foreign language? You can't see what they do half the time and you don't understand what they're saying. So it helps if they stop and show you carefully what they're doing so you don't get lost. One, two, three. So if I'm doing this boring, it's because sometimes I get people who don't speak English that can only catch on what I'm doing by seeing what I'm doing. And I'm on my last corner here. One, two, three. And that's the one that we go into. And we're going to tie off at this point. When I tie these off, I like to take this little loop here and pull it way down inside, way down in there. It's a very small little knot. Okay. And I just want to get this out of the way. Just so I don't have to deal with it on the front. One of these holes. Bring it through. And then go through both of the strands. And this makes a bulkier um, stitch, longer stitch, than you have when you just slip stitch when you're going around. So I always count this as one of my chains for height. So that's one, two, three, four. And you should know the rest of this just magically. Double chain one, double chain one, and we're going to do the corner group just like we did in the last color here. Chain three, one, two, three, okay? One, two, three. Now I'm sure you can do this without me. So why don't you just go around and then we'll come back and tie this off, okay? Okay, since I started here, once I finish my last corner, I'm ready to slip stitch. So I'm going to chain one. the one I go into. Okay. Okay. Now, if you fought the squared granny, squared diamond granny, you're going to love this one. I like the square diamond granny because the way you do the edge, it makes it very distinctive. So it really looks like it's a diamond laying on another diamond. But you don't need that with these little tiles. You can do it if you want to, but you don't need to. Now, you come into, I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. 
come into the hole next to the center. Here's your center hole. You want to come in next to it. Bring your loop in. Bring both loops through. Uh, split my tail. Okay, there we go. And this counts as a single crochet. So we're going to wrap and we're going to come down in the middle piece. Okay. And we're going to do a corner set. Double, chain one. Double. And we're back on the center sets here. So we're going to do two chains. One, two. Now, don't chain one. Come down into this hole and do a single crochet. Chain two. And see this stitch right here, this last stitch before here at the corner? You want to go into that and do a single crochet. Okay. Now you chain one, because this here is your first double. Wrap, come down into your single crochet down here, and finish that set. See there? You have your set, you have your hole. Chain one, and we're going to go back into this corner and do a corner set. One, two. Now here's the set. We don't want the set. We want the corner piece. Right here. Chain the single crochet space. Now we've connected here, so we need to connect here. Right down into the stitch and do a single crochet. Now, this is the part that's different. We're going to chain four. One, uh, pardon me. I'm going to count this as one. I'm going to chain three more. One two, three, and turn. Not connecting anywhere around here. Wrap and go back into that single crochet space. And we're going back in the other direction. Do your corner. Now this is the third tier, the third row. We're going to do three chains. So we're going to do one, two, three. And finish our corner group. And we're coming back down here into the chain one space. Whoops, wrap first, Chris. And chain one. And 
pull a loop up and give it a loose tie. Okay, now this is the front, back, front, and you're ending on the front. So if you did this side, you end on here. You don't want to end on here. You want to end up at the tail. So we're going to back up. We went this way. We're going to back up. And come on. Here's the middle. Come on next to it. And we're going to repeat what we just did. That's one, two, I keep wanting to go up. Okay, this acts as a single crochet space. Now we wrap and we go into the middle. I seem to be fixated on doing that. Chain one, go back in the middle. This is the middle square. One, two. And do your set. Chain one. Nope. Don't chain one. Come back in this hole. Do a single crochet. Chain two. Now we're back at the corner here. We're going to go into this stitch right next to the corner and do a single crochet. Now we turn. Now remember this is row two. We don't do this fancy stuff until row three. So we'll do a single crochet. I mean single chain. And we're going to come back in here and do our double. Chain one and back to the corner group. This is the second tier or the second layer. So we're one, two. We're still on one, two on the corner. We'll come back down here to our last set in our single crochet space. And without chaining one, I'm going to come down in here into this last stitch before the chain, corner chain, do a single crochet. And we're going to make that heel. Remember the heel we have over here? So we're going to chain one, two, three, four and turn and go back into a double crochet in that hole chain one and we're on our way back and this is tier three row three level three so we're going to do three chains in our corner. One, two, three. Now, come back down this one chain space, one crochet space on the end. Do our double, single, double, chain one, and come over here and we're going to connect over here to our heel. One, two.
three. All right. Now you back it up again. Do your next side. You back it up. Do your next side. And when you're all done, we're going to take this and we're going to connect it to the heel of your last side. Okay? Okay. We are back, the end, the left side. Take the tail we had from our first section, and just connect it to our last section. We're ready to add our outsides. Okay. Now for this one, um, I don't want to start in the middle. So I'm going to start over here on the edge. Just like that. And I'm going to go one, two, three, because I'm counting this longer one as my four. Gives me half a corner set. You can start anywhere you like. Normally I would probably start here. This one would be different. Sometimes you feel like going the other direction, you know? <laughs> now, you chain one. We're over the center here. You wrap, you go over this and down into this. Make up a loop. Chain one. Go over this and through this. And you just connect it. And chain one and continue on around. And we'll see how big this is going to be using a G hook. Now I don't know whether it's because we're sticking with the worsted weight yarn. But the G-hook doesn't seem to be making it that much smaller. Three chains on the end. Then the um, uh, uh, J did. I think it's just going to be about an inch smaller. But you know that's just about the right width for a nice uh, scarf. So you figure how many, uh, how long you would like your scarf. If you want a six foot scarf, say, that would be 72 inches. And that would be nine squares. Nine times eight is 72. And then you could do this uh, by doing all your center squares first. And then all of these outsides, then all your corners, and then all your outsides. And then connect them. <clears throat> that ought to work. Okay. Back at the center. I chained one already. Why don't you come over here? Get out of the way. Okay. Wrap. Right down through there. Chain one. And 
and the side connected. See how easy that is. Chain one. Go to our going around. I am using uh, chain threes on the corners. The corner looks too big to use. You can always change to chain two. But when you get this big, it really helps if you have the chain three. It keeps the integrity of your square. Okay, so going around. And we'll, we'll do the uh, ending measurement of this puppy. See what we got. Back around at my first corner set. One, two, three, and flip stitch. Now, since this is going to be part of a bigger project, where we're going to be putting the uh, squares together, and then going down the sides for a scarf or something, we don't need to put another layer. But if you would like to, you can always go back around and either put a slip stitch or single crochet layer around. Here's the big one with the J-hook. Here's the one we just did with the G-hook. And it's a little less than eight, maybe seven and three quarters inches. Figure eight with the connection though. Make about nine of these and connect them together. And to connect them together, we're going to put them face to face. And you just want to slip through, stitch through the back edges. When you look at the front of something you crocheted, you can see how the stitches face you, like that. So you put these together and you slip stitch through the back edges here. You do that from corner to corner. And then when you have all 11 together, or all nine together, you just give it a good single crochet or half double crochet right down the side. I would give it a single. It's wide enough, I think. Give it a single all the way down the side, across the bottom. You'll have yourself a real nice little scarf. Okay. I hope you like that. I, I really do, I really do think it's a neat pattern. And this would make a really nice uh, bedspread We use the smaller ones for a bedspread. You can alternate them by, uh, well, you could take, use this as a stash buster. Take all different kinds of colors. You could have uh, red and gold and white and pink and red and pink. And have dark color inside and the light outside. You could just alternate that way. Dark blue and the light blue. That is going to make a problem when you connect them, though, because you'll have to. You'll need one color that you'll put around every border. That's the only problem there. You'll need one color you'll put around every border, so when you connect it, it's not obvious. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's a really simple pattern. You can see how long it took. It wasn't that hard at all. You have a great day. Happy crocheting, people. Happy hooking.